بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم علي الله مدد فرما الواحد القحار علي الله مدد فرما حزبنا الله ونعم الوكيل ونعم المولى ونعم النسير 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 يا مولاي مهربان يا مشكل غشا مهربان چند ساتي جمع ہوئے ہیں مولا علم گنان کی محفل سے فائدہ اٹھانے کے لیے مولا اپنی باطنی ترقی کے لیے مولا یا مولا مہربان یا مولا مہربان تو مدد فرما اپنے نور کی تائیدات سے مدد فرما مولا کے دلوں میں روشنی ہو علم کا بول بالا ہو مولا تیری شناخت ہو تیری محبت ہو مولا اور ہم حقیقت کے راستے پہ آگے سے آگے بڑھتے چلے جائیں مولا یا مولا مہربان یا مشکل کشا مہربان مدد فرما مدد فرما مدد فرما آمین اللہ آمین شکر اللہ الحمد للہ شکر اللہ الحمد للہ یا لی مدد تو آل فرنس سو ٹوڈے ایز آر لاس پارٹ آف امپورٹنس آف ٹرو نالج وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ importance of true knowledge from different angles. I wonder if you've noticed it. To make a point, to help us understand why are we here? Because there has to be a complete understanding. If we truly believe that we need this path, then we will be motivated to be on time, to be attending regular classes. If we still do not feel that it is important for us, then surely we will have, you know, commitment problems. But I'm glad, I truly appreciate those who are here. And today, it's our last session about importance of true knowledge. So let us start with Farman of Maulana Hazri Ma, and I would like you, one of you to read that, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. But in the Shia traditions, the role of the soul, the role of the intellect are particularly important. And in order to develop the spiritual enlightenment and the happiness of the individual, he is entitled to have additional search, additional practice of his faith in Bangi. Karachi Darkhana, second floor, Pakistan, November 5th, 1991. Please 
beautiful farman of Maulana Hazri Imam. And Maula is actually talking about very many things. In this one small paragraph, Maula Bapa is talking about very many things. But today we want to focus on the role of intellect. When we talk about our tariqa, our Shia traditions, we do realize the importance of soul. But we have somehow lagged behind in realizing the importance of intellect. And Mawla Papa is very interestingly taking both the things together to draw our attention that the role of soul and the role of in, uh, intellect are particularly important. Why? Why are we here? Why do we want to do this? For Ruhani Taraki, for spiritual enlightenment, for that happiness which our peers, pegambers, all yeah, do talk about it. We want to seek that peace and happiness too. But for that, we do need to have this additional search. If we don't search, we will not be able to get that happiness which we seek. And then Mala Bapa is telling us additional practice of his faith in bandagi. Now I hope we remember the word bandagi. Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah has explained this word in his Farman, saying bandagi is from band. And then he says the... Uh, uh, name of Abdullah, the one who is the slave of Allah. So bandagi is like being enslaved by farmans of Imam. We are obedient to Imam. And if we are seeking bandagi, gulami of Imam, doing his ibadat, becoming abid, it is not possible if we were to read his farmans selectively. What happens? We do read his farmans. We do follow farmans. Whatever we like comfortable with. We love going to Jamaat Khana, shukar alhamdulillah. We do know the importance of ibadat. But when it comes to learning knowledge, we are not following the farman the way we ought to. Why do we do that? The question is, why are we failing to realize the importance of the intellect, the role of intellect which it plays in our religious progress, in our Bhatni Taraki? Why do we do that? It requires us to work hard. It requires us to come out of the comfort zone. And when we are expected to work harder, you know, as humans, we become lazy. We will have different excuses. And then, you know, we lag behind. But we do see that those who do not take that into consideration, whatever limitations they have, they overcome that because they truly seek, they are truly searching. They are able to get there. So that is why we are here, that we do realize that what is the importance of the true knowledge. Now here I'm taking totally different turn and talking about Davate Ashira. This, this is a very important historical event. Davate Ashira was the time when Prophet Muhammad actually, when Jibrail came, when he was doing the ibadat of Ismail Azim in Gare Hira, and Jibrail came and told him to read. And he says, I don't know how to read. People generally think that he was uneducated. But in reality, it was Ruhaniyat, the language of spirituality. He was saying, I don't know how to read. And Jibrail says, read by the name of Allah. That, you know, Quranic verses, it's for us to realize that when we do want to walk on the path of spirituality, the language of Ruhaniyat, we don't know. We don't understand. There are very many in Jamaat actually who have progressed in Rohaniyat, but they don't know themselves. Why? For that one requires ilmul yakin. One requires the knowledge to intellect. Then only the language of Noor can be comprehended. Otherwise, we don't know what's going on. When Prophet Muhammad became Prophet and Allah commanded him to give this dawat to his family. It is a very important 
practice that whenever one is getting some food, some knowledge, first and foremost, we invite our family members, our close friends to walk on this path. To. It is a habit of our pagambers. And this is exactly what Prophet Muhammad did. He invited his family, he gave them a dawat. And the dawat is known as dawat ashira All the family members were present in that dawat. And Prophet Muhammad, what does, what does he say to them? Oh, children of Abdul Muttalib, follow me and you will be the kings and the rulers of the earth. God has surely never sent a prophet without appointing his wise jurant, wasi, minister, heir, brother, and legacy. Who among you then will be my wise jurant, my heir, brother, and minister? So he is saying that he was himself a prophet, but it is Allah's habit that he does not send any prophet in this world without appointing his vice chairman. And we do know who spoke out of all those 40 plus members in the Dawat, Mawla Ali spoke. Mawla Ali is only eight years old. And he says, I will help you. And Pegambar says, definitely, you are my wali my brother, my wasi, my wali. And Mola Ali became the wise gerent of Prophet Muhammad. Now this is in the beginning of our prophet's journey. And then we do know the event of Gadir Yakun. Why are we talking about this dawat ashira in importance of true knowledge? Because it is very much applicable to today's time. How and why? What has happened that we do recognize the Imam, Mawla Ali. Somehow, some of us have forgotten the connection of our Imam to Prophet. Our Prophet was the Natik. He had a higher rank. Imams are always present. Even before the Pagambar, Imam was there. Mawla Abu Talib, father of Mawla Ali. And before Maulana Abu Talib, Maulana Abdul Muttalib, and this is his family he's talking to. So this is the family of Imam. And the Prophet is asking about who's going to be my wife's children, and Maula Ali became the wife's children. After Maula Ali, we all are okay. As a smiley Jamal, we are very connected to Imam, Maula Ali. We read Kalam and Maula, and we like to recite Ginans. But what happens when we talk of our prophet and his book, Quran, we have problems. Now, this is from Quran, chapter 14, verse 1. Allah says, a book which have revealed to you, he's talking to Prophet Muhammad, a book which we have revealed to you that you might bring mankind out of darknesses into the light by permission of their Lord to the path of the exalted in might, the praiseworthy. Prophet Muhammad was sent a book, and that book was for the reason of bringing the humanity, the followers, out of the darknesses. Now, what is that book? For an Ismaili, that book is Hazrima. Alhamdulillah, very good answer, correct answer, but incomplete. Imam is the speaking book. There is no doubt about it. There's no denying of it. Imam is nur, full of ilm and nur. And we would say as a smiley that yes, we are getting the talimat of Imam through farmans and ginans. But look at this verse. It says a book which we have revealed to you. Normally we have to read a book. Are we reading a book which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad? And we do know we are talking about Quran. Let's go further to understand this point. Now, this is another verse in the Quran. Chapter 23, verse 63. It says, nay, but their hearts are covered from understanding this. And they have 
other deeds besides which they are doing. Allah is saying that their hearts are covered. They are in gafla. They are in blindness in understanding this. And the Quran actually has been added by the translators. That's why I did not read. Whenever we read Quranic translation, we don't read the brackets because brackets are actually the opinion of understanding of the translator. So I'm not reading that. But when we are reading this verse, that their hearts are blinded, they are in gafla, they are in darkness, they are covered from understanding this. Understanding what? For the translator, it is Quran. For us, if a smiley were to talk to anybody else, it will be Imam. So the question is, is this translator right or is an smiley right? Where is the lack? Where is the problem? Now let's go to Golden Jubilee time. In Golden Jubilee, Malana Hazim Ma, when he was asked, Mala Papa, what gift would you like? You know what Mala Papa said? I would like my Jamaat to recognize me. Of course, the LIF members were like, do we not recognize you, Mullah Papa? In their heart, they're thinking of these questions. But of course, they didn't ask that. They said, Mullah Papa, what would you like us to do? And Mullah Papa says, I would like you to recite Hadith is Saklan and I am Throughout Golden Jubilee, we stood up and we recited Hadith is Saklan and I am In USA, we did that for 18 months. I don't know about Canada and other places. For 18 months, we stood up and we heard this uh, hadith and the Quranic words recited to us in Arabic. But what was the essence? Did we ever understand that? You know, what is hadith is saklan? I'm sure all of you know. Hadith is saklan says, Prophet Muhammad says that I have left for you two heavy things. One is my book and the other is itarat, my arm. So when we are reviewing this verse, for a Sunni Muslim, what he has done from the saying of Prophet Muhammad, Prophet left two heavy things, not physically heavy, not the book is heavy, not Hazim Muhammad is that heavy. It's not physical heaviness we are talking about, but it's the responsibility of it, accountability of it, the burden of it, the knowledge of it, in its exaltedness, in its sacredness, it's very, very heavy. So for Sunni, he has kept the book with him. For a Sunni Muslim, they are following the book. What are Shia doing? Especially Ismaili, I'm not going to talk about anybody else, but us, especially as the indo Pak Jama, the Kocha Jama. What did we do? We held on to Imam. Why would Hazrat Imam in Golden Jubilee tell us to recite Hadith as Saklan? Because he's telling us something. Pay attention to this Hadith that Quran and Ali, they are together. They are never going to be separated. Never going to be separated. So the blindness from one or the other is actually blindness. And then, very interestingly, this verse says, and they have other deeds beside which they are doing. Again, the translator thinks it's evil deeds. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. It is talking about deeds. Do you know that from deeds to deeds, there is a difference? There are good deeds, which every human does, regardless of Ismaili, Sunni, or Shia, or Hindu, or whatever. There are good deeds being humane, but then there are two deeds, deeds which are done in recognition of Imam. That is what Allah is talking about here. So if we truly understand what Imam wants us to do is to truly understand the knowledge of Quran and recognize him in the batin. So when we follow our tariqah, when we do not use our intellect, what happens? There are layers and layers of problems in the sense that just because we don't know, we don't have the knowledge. And we get very happy with our deeds. What are those deeds? 
Oh, I pay my dasun regularly. Oh, I go to Jamaat Khana twice a day. Oh, I sit in Ibadah. But then I would challenge and ask, is it good deed or true deed? Is it in the recognition of Imam or is it just deed to fit in? To be, have this label that I'm smiley? Are we following the Farameens the way Imam wants us to? And again, very humbly, we take our Imam very granted, for granted. We do have this attitude of entitlement. Mala Papa is with us, he's a speaking Quran. Sure, but he is, he being the speaking Quran, he's telling us to read Quran. But because it is in, it is in Arabic, it is difficult. I don't know Arabic myself. But Mola Bapa is not telling us to learn Arabic. There's no farman that Mola is saying that learn Arabic to study Quran. If somebody wants to, sure. But I'm so proud of these members who are here. They are committed. They have understood Mola's farman and they do want to learn to walk on this path further. Go ahead on this journey. These are two different verses. One is 12 by 108. So the use of 12 by 108. It says, this is my way. Again, Allah is saying to Prophet, say, this is my way. I call on Allah with sure knowledge. You know, for Ismaili, what is the way? Our Imam is the way. An Imam is calling us to the higher reality with sure knowledge. How many of us have that knowledge? True knowledge. And then we have another verse, chapter 22, verse 8. And it says, and of the people is he, there are all people, humanity, right? Is he who disputes about Allah. There are people who have opinions, arguments about Allah. Without knowledge or guidance or an enlightening book. So you know what, when we read these verses of Faramins, we don't want to talk about others because that's not right. We do want to talk about just me. How does it apply to me? Do I have the knowledge? Do I have the guidance? Do I have the enlightening book? Am I really using this knowledge, reading this book, working on this guidance? Are we fulfilling the conditions? If not, then we do need to learn because it's not that we do want to uh, stay away from Imam. We are lovers of Imam. We want to get close to Imam. We are seeking him. But then we do need to take that step to understand where are we lacking? What do I need to do? How do I, you know, continue to learn? Another verse, very important. Chapter 41, verse 17. We guided them. Allah says, we guided them, but they preferred blindness over guidance. Can you imagine this? Ali is with Quran, Quran is with Ali. Hadith Saklan says that I have left for you two heavy things. One is my book and other is Itra. We guided them, but they preferred blindness over guidance. I don't think I need to go into any detail explaining this verse. We all understand what are we talking about. This is the Farman of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah. London Jamaat Khana, 11th June 1951. Allahumma salli Muhammad Books and written words are not enough as guidance in religion. Very interesting wordings. Are we not talking about book? But listen to this Farman. You know, we do need to open up our minds and thoughts. I'm reading this Farman, which totally kind of sounds opposite to what I've been saying. But read the Farman carefully to understand what we need to learn. Books and written words are not enough as guidance in religion. For guidance ought to be ought to be according to change of time. And therefore, it would be found that a living prophet in every period had come on earth to guide people. We do see that, right? 
एक लाख चौबीस हजार पैगम्बर एवरी पॉइंट इन टाइम देर हैज बीन अ पैगम्बर वी डू नो अबाउट मेजर प्रॉफिट नातिक every period of time natik has been there to teach us according to the time and then mola says during my time of imam imam sultan mahmasha i have made many changes in farmas and am still altering them according to the times according to the times after the death of prophet muhammad hazrat ali came on the throne of khilafat and imamat and since that time imamat has been restored among his descendants every point in time we have had prophet and we are guided and after prophet there are imams who are guiding us and it is hazri imam currently but the key point in this farman is that there are changes constantly happening for us to be guided and especially we as ismaili imam has called us ibnul waqt we are children of time we have to accept the alterations which are done according to the time according to the time what we need to ask by reading this farman have we moved on are we walking on the path according to the time this is another farman of hazri imam the first paragraph we talked about it last time this is the moscow russia farman january 29 1995 and we talked about the fundamental principle for us is to recognize the imam of the time but look at the next paragraph Imam is talking about it is he who guides the jamaat who imam who guides the jamaat in the interpretation of its faith at any time during its lifetime meaning within one period of imam there are changes being brought in there are changes being brought in imam is focusing on our faith faith of intellect are we following our faith with aqal when p said bhore mane srevo which has been misunderstood so much bhore mane means being innocent not naive not unintelligent bhore mane is being innocent keep your heart like masoom innocent not naive beakal without knowledge without intellect so we what we do what do we do we take <clears throat> farman or ginan phrases and use it according to our benefit we don't go deep into these concepts to understand why would peer say like that if we are hearing things which is totally opposite to what we have heard in ginans why there is a reason we have not understood the ginans it is a faith of intellect it is a faith of individual search and then mola is saying hazrat ali said that the intellect is another facet of faith and it is upon us upon you to use your intellect within the ethic of our faith in whatever time and whatever place you live the use of intellect is the proper behavior in society at any given time proper use of behavior are we using our intellect that's the question now this is beautiful farman of molana sultan mahmud shah september 14 1899 mola is saying if you want to learn allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali if you want to learn the quran become students of those who know its real meaning tawili meaning deeper understanding in this way you will learn its real meaning mola pa is not talking about translation here. translation translators have put their biases in translation we as esoteric tarika batni tarika we need to look for real meaning you are unaware of the many books of our faith how interesting now didn't he said in the last farman that books are not enough for guidance it is important to know which books to read if we do not know the right books about our deen again will be misled 
Remember, in today's time, we are bombarded with information. We are bombarded with knowledge. Where is the real meaning? Where is the tavi? That's what we need to follow. Therefore, you have not studied most of them because we don't know, so we have not studied it. If you study such books, you will understand and no defect, no defect will remain within you. Look at his words. Your akal will guarantee you that your faith is true. Akal will give gawai, not the heart. It has to appeal to our logic. It has to make sense logically. If it is not making sense logically, it is not right. In our tarika, there is nothing hocus pocus. Everything is based on logic, mantak, intellect. And then Imam is saying, I guarantee it. I guarantee, there's no doubt there. There's no doubt if you're reading the right book. There will be no doubt in our heart. There will be no darkness in our heart. No vasvasa. This you will come to know when we will read the right books. This is Mullah Hazri Imam Sulman. Very important for Man, Bombay, India, Karimava Jamaat Khana, November 22nd, 1967. Allah Maha It is important that in learning parts of the Quran, you must clearly understand the meaning. Again, Mullah Bapa is not saying translation. But meaning, there is a difference. There is an English word translation and there is an English word meaning. He could have easily said translation, but he did not. Imam is speaking very wisdomfully. Imam is saying, you must clearly understand the meaning. If you recite parts of the Quran, certain words must represent to you a concept. If you study the Quran and Sharif, this concept will become well known to you and through you, to the Jamaat at large. Imam's expectation is that not only that you learn the real meaning, learn the concept, and then teach it to your family and friends. Don't keep it to you. And then it says, this takes many years of study. It requires commitment. It is not easy. This requires commitment. This takes many years of study. Then, Malaba knows our thoughts, right? So what he's saying? I do not want you to think that this can be learned easily or without hard work. Imam is asking us not to give excuses. Do not be lazy. Come out of comfort zone and learn. And he's not telling anywhere to learn Arabic. Please be mindful. But it is important that if I ask specific questions, you should be able to answer them unless they are highly intricate matters. You know what Imam is saying here? Even in the understanding of the real meaning, there are darja. Most will be able to, Imam is expecting us, that should be able to answer specific questions. But when it is highly intricate, Probably there are very few who can answer. So Imam is not expecting us to yet get there. But he's giving us dawa that not only that you want to limit yourself to the understanding of concepts, but get to the highly intricate matters. Meaning what? The raz of the batin, the raz of the imam, secrets of imam, highly intricate matters. I hope this is clear. And I hope that you will not forget that the meaning is the foundation of our concept of Islam. It is the meaning Imam is talking about because our concept is esoteric. If it were exoteric, then it would not matter because there are very many followers of exoteric. Zahiri followers are very many, it does not matter. But because it is batini, it is esoteric, Imam is drawing our attention. It is not exoteric. It is not Zahir Imam is talking about. Which means the meaning is for our Jamaat. It is for our tariqa. And this is the foundation. So do not forget this. So when we read Hadith Saklan, we recited Hadith Saklan, or we will listen to these Hadith. Um, saying of Prophet Muhammad and Maul Ali. Different sayings, right? 
Mawla Ali says that I am the one who is speaking Quran. I am the one who is going to do the Taweel. I am the teacher of Quran. It is all being referred to its meaning, the Batni meaning. And remember, Batin is also being taught. Batin is invisible, it is hidden. Does not mean it doesn't exist. It does exist. It is hidden to our eyes. The way we always thought that Imams are in Batin. Does not mean that Imam did not exist. Imam were there, Imam were always there. But we did not know. Similarly, one of the meaning of the Batin is that it is behind the veil. We have to remove the veil to see the Batin. How do you do that? What is that veil? Ilm ul We need to learn the true knowledge to be able to remove that veil so we can get to the Batin at the first step to true knowledge. And then comes annuality. In our heart, in our batni eyes, our batni sense open up. We are able to see the secrets of Imam in our batni. But that's secondary. The first is knowledge. And that requires us to learn, not Arabic, the true meaning. Now, this is very important uh, extract from the speech mm. of Malna Hazimam. At Aga Khan University, Karanchi, November 11th, 1985. Imam is talking to everybody now. But remember, look at his words, so powerful words. Imam is talking about Aklekul, universal intellect. Universal intellect both transcends and informs the human intellect. Who is Aklekul in today's time? It is the Imam of the time. It is the Hazri Imam. He being the Aklekul feeds, nourishes, teaches our needy intellect, innate intellect, Aklegarizi. He being the universal intellect, he teaches us. And remember, we read the Quranic words that we guided, but they preferred blindness. Meaning, Hazri Imam has done his job. He has given us faramins. Imam Sultan Amash has given us faramins. Question is, how many of us truly understood those faramins and followed it? That is the task. That is the question which we need to ask. So, Aklikul not only transcends, informs the human intellect too. It takes us beyond, above. But first, we need to understand the true knowledge. And how Imam is saying about that in this uh, speech? It is this intellect which enables men to strive towards two aims dedicated by the faith, that he should reflect upon this, the environment of Allah, reflect, Imam Sultan Mamasha told us to do khayal for two hours. Remember that? It's the same words. Same meaning, different word is probably. Allah has given that, given and that he should know himself. So the signs in the environment which Allah has given to us and then we should know ourselves. Man arfa nafsihi faqad arfa rabbihi. The one who recognizes himself or herself will recognize the Lord too. It is the light of intellect which distinguishes the complete human being, not just human, okay? Complete human being from the human animal. Do we recall the Farman of Imam Sultan Mamasha? That there are two paths in front of you. One will make you animal, other will take you to angelic being. Ek rasta janwar ki taraf jata hai, dusra firishte ki taraf jata hai. So when Mala Papa is talking about complete human being, the one who has realized its potential, his potential, what will they become next? They will walk on the path of becoming an angel. They are no more human animal. How? How is it done? By developing intellect. And what does that require? Inquiry. Seeking knowledge. It requires free inquiry the main of faith who fails to pursue intellectual search 
is likely to have only a limited comprehension of Allah's creation, limited comprehension. Indeed, it is man's intellect that enables him to expand his vision of that creation. Very, very important. It is man's intellect. It, the journey begins from our own akal and then it connects to the universal intellect. When we are not willing to learn or open up, open our minds, open our heart to accept, to receive, how will we connect? So what happens? We end up becoming human animals who follow the instincts and think that we are doing good deeds. This Farman, recent Farman, 19th December 2017, Malabapa has used the word learn 11 times, learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. This makes me cry. This Farman, every time I read, I, I see a very affectionate mother who is so worried about her child. Learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. Can be imam more loving than this, more caring than this? How can one encourage us? Why are we such deaf? One of the questions which was asked when I shared this Farman, the way I'm sharing with you, somebody said, but this Farman is for younger generations. It is not for us. We are older, we are 80 years old. We cannot learn. Let me tell you, when Imam is talking about younger generation, it is not only applying to physical age. It is applying to our the age of intellect of our spiritual journey. We are we are like kid on feeding bottles. Imagine if we were to be truly adult, right? Let's take the example of the worldly life. We are adults, and when we go to work or businesses, and we are told, we are given instruction. This is how you will become successful. How many times it is repeated for us? We take our own accountability, learn and understand how it is done so we can really, really get successful. And when we are dealing with children, how many times do we have to say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this? Tell me, this Farman, did he give to just young children or open to us in Diamond Jubilee for everyone? What is he doing here? He's talking to us who are behaving like children. Learn, 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 and learn, and learn. Because we have failed to understand his farmans. We have failed to be farman bardar. Again, I would say, shukar alhamdulillah, that today we are here. If we were not to be here, it was point of worry. It was point of concern. Shukar mola, shukar mola, that we have made it here. We are seeking knowledge. We are serious, and we are committed. We are on the path of learning. Our peers, in Momin Chaitani, peer says, Eji akhar jamanu avyo avi cheli kaljugni var, avtar sarve pura thaya, have sami rajo thashe aswar. I very particularly picked up this verse, very particularly, and I'll tell you why. In this Ginan, Peer is talking about the end time, the last time, the time of Kiyama. Imam Sultan Mama Shah has told us it is the end time. But then this Ginan talks about avtars. And then Mola Ali is the king. He will do aswari. The word aswari actually means, I took it as it is online on the heritage site. Aswari actually means Kiyama. Aswari, the word Aswari in today's Tavili understanding, it words Kiyama. That he will be king of the time of Kiyama. Now, all these Kiyama and Maulali being the king, we do know he's king. But how is he king of Kiyama? That is all higher concepts which we will learn, inshallah. 
because it is an invitation to those who listen to these lectures to come to advanced classes and seek knowledge. So when they seek knowledge, when they have complete commitment, then only they can get to the higher conceptual learning. If there's lack of commitment, then it is difficult because when we walk on the path of knowledge, what do we do? We start from simple and basics, and then we keep building on it, on it. So we continue to walk on this path in an organized way, making it easy. So we do not stumble on it. We do not fall down. We continue to walk. We hold each other's hands. That can only be done in a small groups in advanced sessions. But this Kinan talks about avatars. And one of the friend actually asked about reincarnation. So inshallah, this Nachis is planning to talk about reincarnation. We do need to understand wherever we have misconception of knowledge. And we do need to understand what does it mean to be Ibn al -Wakt? Why do we need to read Quran? Not Arabic, but to learn its true meaning. We cannot understand the true meaning if we don't pick up the Quran, if we don't tag the Quran, we do not know the Arabic verses. We will read the translation. You see me sharing translation. Wherever I know Arabic, I try. When I don't know, I just read translation. But focus here is the tawil of it. And this farman of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, when he sat on the Gadi, the first farman, He's only eight years old. What does he say? Allahumma salli Allah Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is the last period. And whosoever has true faith in Imam will see the miracles and impressive events in his time by the Imam in Zaman. And those who have half-hearted faith, they will witness the miracles but will not believe them. Whosoever has not believed the miracles and events of Nabi and Imams are like a blind individual who cannot see. Now, this Farman is not for Sunni, not for anybody else following Islam. This is for Ismaili Jamaat, Jamaat of Mominis sitting in front of the Imam. When the Jamaat is sitting in front of the Imam, do they not have Imam? But Imam is saying, those who have half-hearted faith, Adhura Iman Wale. This Adhura Iman Wale will also witness the miracles because it, miracles will be happening right in front of our eyes. But they will remain blind. There's a lot of food for our thought to reflect on this Farman. And this Farman is such an important Farman that will keep coming back to this Farman in different ways. It is This Farman is like a uh, how good example should I give? You know, there's an example of onion in a different way. When we are, you know, we look at onion when we peel it off and we, we have taken the first peel off and it is onion. But you know, if we were continue to remove the peels, again, it is onion. You continue to peel it off, peel it off and it's onion. That is the meaning of Tavi. That is the meaning of the understanding. There's a layers after layers after layers after layers of understanding. What does it require? It requires me to work hard and peel it off, peel it off, peel it off to realize that there's a peel after that, after that, there's layers after that. Because there are so many thousands. For us to really understand, we have to hold on to this concept of tabi and work hard to unveil. So this farman is such that we will continue to unveil it, continue to come back on this farman and apply it on ourselves when we are stay, standing at a different stages. Today, we are at a general learning stage, basic learning stage. And what we are listening to? We are listening to farman of Imam where Mola says to Jamaati members who are there to give bayah of Imam, to have the didar of Imam, Mullah says that those who have Adura Iman, they will not know 
what are the majis are tell me any one of us do we not want his majis are or we want his majis are desperately we seek his love his didar his majis are but then imam is saying that those who have half hearted faith they will remain blind we are not physically blind which blindness imam is talking about here the blindness of aqal here i would like to stop if anyone has any questions we can talk about it this is from gawara to gore you have to seek knowledge from birth to death but that knowledge only ustad uh, mahtaram is mahtaram you said it's you learn the true knowledge that's from our dai like uh, Jafar bin Mansur Yaman Abu Yaqub Sajistani Nasir Khisrau Fi Sadruddin Abu Atam Razi they they were the true dai they were the had that knowledge and that ilm and they could do the tawil for us and the, the same Quran it was in their time too so this their tawil is very authentic and true tawil so tawil is very important and allah says na ya wa ma ya'lamu tawil illa allah wa rasuluna fil ilm it says um, on the imam and the one who maula guided in giving this wisdom to he can do tawil and i'm sure inshallah my buzur ustad Niamat Sahiba, Nawin Sahiba, and um, Dr. Khalil. Dr. Khalil is very smart. And Dr. Shafiq, Virani. Uh, Dr. Sahiba, Akir Muhammad. And they can do tawil for you because they have ishq. They have iman. They have iman. And from there, there um, you can feel shukr uh, what maula give to this this jamaat and shukr this is our wealth and and we are so lucky and sadly unfortunately i think this kind of program should be viewed by at least 100 million people at least but unfortunately i tell you you go through all the world, you cannot find 50 smiley. I guarantee you. We born smiley, but we are not smiley. We don't know anything. And that's why we should learn more and day by day. And we always thank you so much. But uh, you know, Niamat uh, <laughs> sometimes I, I compliment you because it's uh, Prophet Ali Salam's uh, hadith, we should uh, respect our teacher. This should be in part of our, <clears throat> you know, daily uh, lifestyle. So we have to respect our teacher. But I know you're very sincere, humble, and you don't want compliments. <laughs> Please forgive. Shukranillah, alhamdulillah. I see a comment by Azmina. Uh, great to go over for months and see a different meanings each time. Your way of sharing is helpful. Shukar Mola. So this knowledge is helping. Yes, that is why it is easier to talk about these concepts in this way with a smaller group who are committed. Generally, there are very many sessions are going on. By the way, I'm going to delete all this because I plan to post these lectures in general group because you know the way Kherudin said said that we do need to share so because you all wanted basics so i will share this with the general group i will delete all this but this is just for you all that um the reason these i mean these sessions are of knowledge going on every weekend like yesterday's session of dr saheb and uh, rashida Sahiba was amazing amazing session i do not know how many of you attended? I did hear Kerudin's voice, so I know that he was there. Naveen Saiba was uh, hosting it, so she was there. I don't know about others. 
But what we are, what we are doing, we are seekers of the real meaning. We are here gathered to understand Imam Swarman, Ginans of our peer in the light of Quran. I have a question. Um, so Quran was revealed and then it took years for Muhammad Sallallahu uh, followers, Robi unki helpers they un looks up together, get woke are, right? They gathered it, they were writing it. I have two questions actually. So how authentic really Quran hai? Kisne kuch miss kiya hoga? Isiliye Mawla Ali bolte hai, mein bolta Quran ho. Kaafi cheeze missing hoga, kaafi cheeze shayad added hoga, galat hoga, maybe, I don't know. So that was one of the question, ke how authentic it is. Dusra, two, three cheeze, I think today also we did or some, somewhere else I read, ke kuch log follow nahi karenge. So was it a prediction? Ke, kyunke, when the Nazil ho raha tha, us waqt to Allah miya nahi dekha tha ke, Muhammad ko follow nahi karenge kuch log. Khali book laki bed jayenge, ale imamat ko nahi follow karenge, right? To kuch log nahi follow karenge, ye prediction tha pehle se. Very good. Yeah, meko bohat in se ye wo ho ra hai, like mene andar ghul ra hai, no questions. Haan. To simply give you answer, and I'll start with the second question and then first. Quran has given this prediction. It's not a prediction, it's a reality actually. It is not a prediction, it is a hakikat that majority will remain ignorant. Majority will remain ignorant. Why would Allah do that? It's not Allah doing it. It's not Allah, it is us humans. We are deciding and according to our habits, Allah sees it and he's saying it, that majority will remain ignorant. It does not matter for anybody to have shanakt of imam, smiley or non smiley Smiley or non-smiley. It is possible. And we do have example, right? We do ex give example of Salman al-Farsi, Pir Nasir al There are these people who not born smiley got to Imam and became elevated in their ranks, right? It is our habit of being lazy, believing the world we see. Batin pe iman nahi. Jo mehnat leni hai, wo nahi karna. Jo seekhna hai, wo nahi seekhna. Farman being a smiley, then Hazri Imam says, Adhura Iman. But he is smiley jamaat hai, Imam ke saamne baithe, Adhura Iman hai. Kaise mumkin hai? So jitne bhi Adhura Iman wale hai, wo ignorant hai. Right? So ye khuda ki marzi nahi thi, ki bhai khuda unko jahil rakhi. Logo ne choose kiya. To logo ki adato ko dekhe khuda ne ye kaha, ki majority to ignorant rahi. If you read this farman of Imam Sultan Hamasha, within this farman, the following paragraph, Imam says, but there are some among you who are moments. So that means there were two categories of people sitting right in front of Imam. Imam could see their souls, and Imam was saying it. So Noor wise, Imam is Allah. He's Allah's Noor. And that's what he's saying in Quran. That was he saying in farman. So it's not a prediction. It is true assessment of us. That is my answer for today. Remember, Taweel is Taweel that Taweel. This is my answer for today for us. So that was your second uh, question to answer. But the first, does Quran have any changes? Oh, yes, it does. There are being uh, documented, uh, uh, written things we do know that there are some changes in Quran, especially in words too. There are few things taken out. But Imam Sultan Mama Shah's Farman, when somebody asked Imam, right, that Mola Ali, uh, there's a historical event that Mola Ali said, uh, Mola Ali went to Usman when he was compiling the Quran. Remember, they were writing on the leaf and the leather and whatnot, right? When it was compiled, Mola Ali went to Hazrat Usman alayhi salam saying that I have this 10 separa of Quran. And I would like to give it to you so you can add it. But what did he do? No, I don't want your Quran. So Imam Sultan Mamasha talks about in his farman that though these separas were not added, but even those 30 separas which are there, they are enough for Imam's praises, for Imam's recognition. That 10 separa which are missing 
Imam says that those talimat has been given to us by peace other than in dinar. Okay? But remember that that talim, which is given in uh, peace other than Zginan, it's continually progressing. And in today's time, we are still given that talim. And those talimat is actually about tawi, the real meaning of Quran. And we continue to get this knowledge, why and how. We just studied the Farman in which Mullah says that Imam continues to give knowledge according to the time. If you go back and listen to the lecture, there is a Farman we talked about that according to time. So today we may think, oh, Quran, be how do we trust Quran? Whatever Quran we have, it is enough for us in the light of the Imam, in the guidance of the Imam. That is why I don't want any one of us to get you know, worried that we don't know Arabic, we need to read Arabic. No, we're not talking about that. We will look at the verses, we will look at the translation done by Shia, done by Sunni, does not matter. Shia translator will say Imam sometimes, Sunni translator will remove the word Imam. That is why we do need to look at the Arabic words to be able to identify, and we will need transliteration. It will say Imam. That is why we have to have a Quran with transliteration because we don't know Arabic. And that is why it is so important for us to have the book of Quran so we can identify the words we are looking for to understand. To again summarize and conclude that this Quran, is it enough for us? It is enough for us with light of the Imam. Make sense? So, yes. So is there any um, talk about Ismaili isko translate kare with Ismaili faith ka rakke? So, Ismailis ko Imam kya guidance de rahe hain? Imam ki guidance, again, one of the farman I read. We are not interested in translation. We are not in Zahirat. We are in Batin. For us, Imam wants us to learn Tawil. Tawil can be understood actually looking at the verses. The words, meanings are there, but its focus is not those words. Those words for us to understand, to go to the meaning of. So we do not need to be stuck at the translation. It does not matter to us. Our objective is Tawil, the real me. And that can be learned regardless. We have Sunni Quran, Shia, translator Quran, does not matter. Quran, the Arabic, we will focus on the Arabic. That is why we need committed people who will pick up the Quran and look at the translation and say, ah, I see the word Imam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Thank you so much. Yali Madad. Naveen. Naveen Saipa. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.